Githyria was once a land of living legends. Years ago, young warriors stood together against an immortal evil known as the Old Ones. In the wake of this struggle, these brave heroes resealed the power of the Old Ones within mystical artifacts known as Eternia Crystals. For a time, there was peace. A mysterious force travels across the land, destroying the Eternia crystals one by one and liberating this ancient evil. Only a handful of crystals remain. After five years of war, even the most powerful strongholds in Etheria succumb to the onslaught of the Old One's army. Leaders and champions from across the realm are forced to put aside their differences and band together to form the Defense Council. With their options dwindling, the Council decides to gather the remaining Eternia Crystals and seal them within the fortified kingdom of Dragonfall. After a long and uneventful journey, the heroes are the first to arrive. They look forward to storing the crystal behind the protected walls of Dragonfall. And finally, getting some rest. What's cooking, folks? Million Phoenix here, and today I am bringing you a look at Dungeon Defenders 2 for Free to Play Friday. This is a game created by Trendy Entertainment, and if you're not familiar with the first, it is a multiplayer, third person, tower defense RPG. Now, that sounds like a mouthful, and it is. The game has a lot of mechanics. And the first of which you'll see there is the ability to switch characters in combat. And there's a lot of loot that drops. Um, at the moment, the loot itself seems a bit cluttered because it drops all over the place. And ultimately, it's a bother just to even pick up. You have the ability to have it auto-collected, but at this particular time, Trendy Entertainment is actually working on revamping the item system, so that could improve the entire loot experience significantly. But as far as the variety of items, that's actually important because as you saw with the switching of the characters, you have access to multiple characters at any given time. Now, that doesn't seem like a big thing until you realize that all of the towers that you're able to build in the game are directly tied to your hero. So, rather than being able to freely select the towers that you want to use, you have a limited number of hero slots and you select the heroes that you want to put in those particular slots. So, you basically choose what you're able to build and have to spend time earning the ability to expand that selection of heroes. So, while you do get access to newer towers, you have the ability to sort of freely select which towers you want to work on first by working on that particular hero and unlocking new heroes gets you the ability to gain access to their towers but you do also need to expand your deck which is a separate but also free cost assuming you play enough now that comes with one other unique difference from the majority of tower defense games not all tower defense use this but there's no passing in this game whatsoever. Uh, the enemies are largely predefined on the map. They will tell you how many enemies are coming from any particular gate or entry point that is currently available and that's it. You merely have to make sure that you dispatch them before they knock down the particular defenses on your stage, which is somewhat simple, but you realize that as you add RPG elements into a game, you have to weigh what's more important at the actual way that players play or the stats on their gear and you'll see with games like this more often than not that not weighing the gear basically makes the gear pointless and so often the gear is heavily weighted and makes it so that having higher performing gear makes things significantly different but that's what happens when you splash rpg elements into a game nothing bad about it, it's actually pretty great and it allows you to customize characters 
to play in a variety of ways. You can have heroes that deal a lot of damage, and you can have heroes that have particularly strong powers. And due to the fact that you're able to switch between heroes, that means that you can actually have heroes that are created specifically for building towers, and heroes that are made specifically for dealing damage and using their abilities, which actually is a very amazing and a little counterintuitive way to create a game. So, in addition to that, there's a lot of other things that you're able to do in the game, and uh, they come down to basically taking a look around town. Here in town, you will see multiple things that you can visit and interact with. The mailbox here actually allows you to enter promotional codes and receive items that they mass mail out to multiple accounts or players in the game, normally through the developers. So that's a good place to visit, but you won't be spending too much time there. The hatchery, on the other hand, is how you'll obtain your pets via the eggs. Any eggs that you don't want to turn into food, you can hatch and it will give you a chance at one of the four available pets. The pets are also able to evolve, so you'll be seeing that somewhat frequently. Here we'll have the Uber Sphere Shop, which uses Defender Metals to purchase spheres that significantly increase the effectiveness of your towers and also give you the access to things like the keys, which unlock the cosmetic chests. So you'll be coming here somewhat often, but Defender Metals are not particularly common or easy to come by. Uh, you get them from your daily quests as well as completing the campaign for the first time and also at the end of each stage. But as the quantity isn't huge, probably won't be throwing too many medals at that early. Now this is the token shop and I personally do not even understand how I have the two tokens that I do right now. So I'll probably have to come back and explain this at a later time. And then back here, we have the sphere shop, the regular one. Now these will give you your small, medium, and large spheres, and largely have to be purchased with gold. And it's the base currency in the game. You use it for a lot of things, but uh, they get pretty pricey. I haven't completed the sphere purchases that I need to yet, and I have four characters so far, so you will be spending a good amount of time just collecting those. And even if you don't wind up dumping all of your money there, you do have the ability to purchase both weapons and relics from the blacksmith and the relic vendor, which are right next to each other over here. And uh, you can purchase, I believe, up to rare gear or whatever the third tier is. Just like your junk, your slightly less junky items, and then items that actually have decent bonuses before you get to your mythical and your legendary stuff. And after you get gear that is actually worth keeping, you can fuse other gear into it so that you are able to uh, increase the stats on it. And this gives you a little bit more control over the way that the stats are actually spread on your character in addition to the character stats that you get from leveling up. So grind away with all the gear that you're able to find. I mean, really, like, there's no reason to throw most of it away, and even after you get some cool stuff, you can pump it up and make it even better, so kudos to the devs for actually doing that. I mean, it makes it so that all of the gear that you're currently getting isn't junk even after you get good stuff, because you gotta pump it up and make it as good as it possibly can be. Now, there's a couple of other things, like, uh, I passed the private tavern which you can do for uh, personal lobbies if you don't want to be online with everybody else there's a section of dummies here which you can you just saw me shooting at and they allow you to uh, test the dps that you and your towers can actually put out catapults will allow you to freely travel across the little town area here and this is the scavenger if you happen to not be able to retrieve all of the items that you pick up in a map the scavenger will actually hold on to a limited number of items for about a couple hours after you leave. So you can go pick them up from him at no charge, but you do need to make sure you keep your inventory relatively clear if you don't want to lose items. And seeing as you need them for both cash 
and the ability to fuse things. That'll be kind of important. Lastly, uh, this is the costume shop, which you will be able to use to access various costumes that you get from playing the game. Some just by leveling up, some from events, and many that you will get by uh, spending the game's currency to unlock them. And this is a Defender's Medal, this is like the real money stuff. As well as uh, using Defender's Medals to unlock the cosmetic chests. So you'll be able to customize, mix and match any of the items that you do have unlocked and make your heroes look sort of the way that you want them to, personalize it a bit. And for the most part, that is Dungeon Defenders 2 right now. Uh, again, the game is actually a lot of fun and it, it is a more focused, stat driven tower defense experience. So if you want a bit more RPG in your tower defense, give it a shot. Other than that, uh, if you guys enjoyed the video or you have any comments for me, feel free to leave a quick comment below. Let me know what you think. Uh, like the video if you enjoyed it, dislike it if not, and feel free to tell me why. Uh, if you'd like to see anything else or you have any other free-to-play games to recommend for me to cover, let me know that as well. But again, I hope you guys enjoyed it and thanks for watching. Until next time, have a good one.